All right, y'all. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J is live. We are in the building. We about to have a great show. We got special guests in the building. We got a special guest who y'all ain't heard this brother on this show in a long time. But we're gonna get to him. We're gonna introduce him momentarily. We got the dating pool diva and the diva diaries later on in the show. And I got a lot to get into. The Pope was in town and Empire came back last week. We got a lot to talk about. Marcus J, ain't no half stepping with yours truly is right now. Open your ears, strap on your thinking cap, socially conscious talk that's entertaining with a dash of humor and the top sports stories of the week. It's time for Ain't No Half-Steppin' with Marcus J. Zellers has Jordan, Jordan with two seconds to go, puts it up and scores it at the buzzer. Michael Jordan has won it for Chicago. Manning, lobs it, Burris alone. If they lying, then they must be half-stepping. Ain't no half-stepping with Marcus J is live. We back in the building. We need y'all to be down with us. So call us, 804-402-2893 to be down with the flagship show. Heard live from the den of Legacy Internet Radio. We appreciate everybody that's listening to us right now on TuneIn. Thanking everybody for checking us out listening to us on the replays right now on youtube and our podcast it's because you guys bring yourself to our station every single week it's the reason why we continue to be one of the fastest growing internet radio stations in the land legacy internet radio we got a lot to get to tonight we teased some of it right there at the very very beginning and so uh i'm not going to waste too much time rambling on by myself i'm gonna get the crew of cast of characters in here you hear this brother usually on the third monday of the month usually when i call him i say man i need my big brother he shows his face uh because we had the number one true fighter on warren ballantyne last week uh we gave him the night off but he's back in see him looking across the table uncle phil big bro joe is up in this joint ew ew marcus j how i do today bro man i'm chilling man it's good to see you man hey you know it's nice to see you too it's like been like 24 hours since i saw you almost yeah almost, yeah, almost. yeah yeah that's we, a wonderful thing though yeah we did football yesterday and uh yeah. we did uh e- inebriation tools oh yeah yeah definitely yeah. definitely you know hops and barley was flowing freely yes it was and uh so was the uh the brown that no, kept we, us it was the clear oh that's right it was clear it was clear i forgot my bad so it's good to see you though man you ready to uh, Talk some trash and have a little fun. Oh, always, always. You know, I love the teasers because I was up there in that mess. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, the listeners, if you're paying attention, you know exactly what he's talking about. Ain't no half step with Marcus J. Live from the Dan Legacy and that radio. This brother right here, man, I ain't seen him in a long time, but I'm glad to have him up in this joint. You hear him every Friday night representing his crew. The pregame, getting you ready for the weekend. He's about the only person I know that's as grumpy as I am, prickly as hell. Prickly Pete is up in this What up? What up? What's up, man? Chilling, man. I need you to introduce me every time I walk through a door, man. You need me to do that? Yeah, man. Like some Space Jam shit. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 23. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt. Well, you know what? You know, you feel the coffers. We might be able to talk. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, we could be like, uh, what's the movie? Uh... Keen and Ivory Wayne's movie, the corny one, with uh, uh, I'm gonna get you sucker, yeah, where you know he walked around with a band behind him, you know what I mean? I could be the hype man as long as you know, as long as the digits look right, we might could talk. I hit you up on a commercial yeah, yeah, break, yeah, yeah, my brother. Yeah. Ain't no half If I ever hit the lottery, I'm gonna have one by somebody doing that for me. I'm doing security, no doubt. Security? I got that covered and cooked. Right. 
Yeah, he's going to definitely cook. cook. Yeah. And cook. You're going to cook and do security for yeah, him. Yeah, because I got hot grease and a <laughs> spatula. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My brother. Ain't no hot stab with Marcus J. Brother, you got, a, you got a homeboy with you. Introduce your brother, man. Introduce your brother. Yeah, and, man. and do as good as I did for you. Now, what, look, you setting up this shit. I don't know if I can do it, man. Look, let me do it like this. This ain't the pregame now. This ain't the pregame. Okay. And so I got to. Yeah, yeah. So you know yeah, I'm just reminded yeah, you, you what we know. talked about before <laughs> we started. I'm going to just say I got my homeboy B with me, man. I've known him yeah. for years, yeah. man. We just, I haven't seen him. I haven't seen you, your face in probably over 15 years. That's about right. Um, That's but about yeah, right. this is my homeboy B, man. He moved back to the city. He's from, from Richmond, born and raised here. He's doing a lot of things Blackwell. musically. Oh, wow. Right. Uh, you, you, you damn near home right yeah, now. He's home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's <laughs> home. So I ain't going to do too much talking, man. What's up, bro? What's happening, bro? Chilling. Glad I got to see you today, man. Likewise, man. Glad to be here. Chilling yeah, yeah. With the Legacy fam, and yeah. uh, ain't no half stepping and such. Yeah, yes, go ahead, plug your show, man. Yeah, plug man. What you Tell do, us man. who you are, what you're doing. Oh, man, I am B Boy So. Uh, I'm a musician, uh, business owner, and such. Just moved back to the city of Richmond from the West Coast, uh, Colorado, or Midwest rather, and a little bit of LA, all that good stuff. All right, my brother D is up in this joint. We'll give you an opportunity to rep your stuff yeah. again before the uh, before the end of the show. Sure. Shouting out, our brother said is listening. What up, bro? Uh, checking out uh, the show here. That's live action captions. One of our sponsors, along with J T Lewis Insurance and uh, Free Spirit Enterprises, will hear spots from each of them later on. If you want to be part of the discussion tonight, give us a call at eight zero four four zero two two eight nine three. If you want to have your opinion heard so we won't go around the table we have some guests that we're expecting uh that'll join us as we progress through the show but we're gonna run with what we got for right now big bro joe prickly pete and our brother b and yours truly check it the pope was in town Popo. the pope the, the the papal visit commenced over the last couple of days and i will add before i even say anything about this right the pope went to washington dc you know what? he went to philadelphia you know what? and he also it. went to new york Harlem. there's one place that he did not go he didn't go to dallas <laughs> <laughs> and so if i'm looking at the northeast oh. or the nfc east i should say i would say oh, that damn. the the Pope is a fan of all but one team. That's no, just no, what no, I'm no, saying. No, 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 That is a, I'm just an saying. observation Ooh. that you made. But what I can say is I'm the Pope is truly a fan of Dallas. He went to pray for everybody else. Oh. Jerry's, Jerry's the Antichrist, so that's that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? He needs wow. to be in church. So, wow. Wow. <laughs> There's that. So let's 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 talk about the Pope. I mean, I'm I'm I, you know my position on religious aspects is well documented on the show. I'm not a religious man. I'm a spiritual man. I respect you know people with regards to how they feel about you know religion and things of that sort. I just ask that they respect my agnosticism. Uh, but Big Bro Joe, I'm gonna start with you. Uh, I know that the papal visit got in your way a little bit, but you know, uh, uh, casting that aside, any thoughts about the pope his visit anything that you observed in watching him make his way through the united states over the last week or so i enjoyed watching him piss the heck out of them republicans is what i really really enjoyed i enjoyed the fact that he wasn't moved or affected by the nonsense that the republican party was putting out i mean i watched from What's the fat dude, the fat chubby white dude? Uh, uh, Chris Christie in New well, Jersey? Well, no, not that one. Limbo. Limbo. See? <laughs> Rush. <Wow. laughs> you talking about one of my biggest competitors here at Legacy yeah. Internet Radio? Yeah, him. And he don't want nothing. Him, that dude. <laughs> <laughs> he don't want to see us. Yo, it's funny. I mean, I watched them sit there and try to tear up everything, put things in the perspectives that, that weren't there. And, you know, Fox News does what Fox News does. Then that's just for me. You know, everybody might somebody might like Fox. I don't know. Right. Right. Eight zero four four zero two two eight nine three is the number to call if you want to get in on this discussion. Eight zero four four zero two two eight nine three. Prickly Pete, what you think, man? Yeah. No, I mean, I think this is the type of leader we've been looking for. I mean, I've been looking for a leader like this in the religious aspect. He's like saying what he's saying is get off of my Get, hey, LeBron, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get off me Like I'm not that important I don't need to ride around In some bulletproof car mm -hmm. uh, Abortion's wrong But you know what it is What it is Gay rights You know I ain't, I ain't trying to have Gay people married But let them do What they gotta do We're not passing laws That says you can't lie anymore Like yeah, let know. people live And just Ooh. do the good do God's work. Do God's work. Do the good. That's what I hear from this guy. And he's just saying too much For, for Fox News I mean what he's saying is Look Global warming Take care of the planet. <laughs> Fox News is saying, look, man, let us burn our oil, man. That's yeah, all I'm saying. He's just saying, like, with my money. He's a, dimmer, he's a liberal 
with conservative principles, and you cannot be a liberal um, uh, to, 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 to certain people, to Fox News. You just can't, you can't be a liberal. And I think this is the type of leader that every religious figure should try to be like and emulate. He seems like he doesn't even want the attention, or it seems like he wanted the attention so he can show people how to, how to, how to, how to, how to, how to Act off of the attention that you get. Right. Wow. You know what I mean? Like he's right. he's a good dude to me. I never. What you I think would about AB? What you think, <laughs> man? As you as you listening to the discussion on the poll, any any uh, opinions want to share, bro? I kind of look at it like this. I'm not Catholic, so he's really nothing to me. Um, just like the, the the emperor of Japan is not my emperor because I'm not a Japanese citizen. Now, as a person, in terms of what he's doing, I kind of dig what he's doing. When you compare it to what other popes have or have not done and the way he thinks and just how he interacts with the common man. Right. But beyond that, he's just a really influential guy right. from Italy or Argentina, Argentina who now lives in Italy. You know what's crazy about it, fellas? I mean, it's one of those times in the show where I really wish that there was some dissension, mm. but there is none. You can't get any. You know, right. I, I've always been impressed by anybody that's a leader that is a leader of the people where the people – Dig them. Anytime the establishment don't like you, it's probably because you're doing yeah. something for the people. Yeah. Yeah, and, tough. you know, I watched him around, you know, going through in the Pope Mobile. And he seemed uncomfortable to me. He just he just did. You know, when you saw people trying to jump over the fences to try to get at him, it's usually little kids and stuff. And, you know, you saw him a few times where the security was trying to keep them away. He was like, nah, bring them over here. You know, let me let me holler at them. I saw the Pope was taking selfies. You, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. You, know, the Pope, yeah. you know, the Pope decided that he wasn't going to do the dinner with the with the rich politicians, that he was going to the hood and hanging out with the yeah. homeless. Yeah, he man. went and he hung out at the jail. I was like, word. I'm mad because that's why I'm telling you. He messed up my whole route. I'm trying to get around through D.C. and, and Fairfax and Arlington, D.C. area, and they got all the holes cut off. I mean, I didn't even think the government knew about the holes that I was trying to get past. <laughs> they had everything shut down. So it Wait, was, what was that that was cut off? All the side cuts. It. Okay, you know, you from Blackwell. I'm from Blackwell, but I, I thought you <laughs> You meant, know we used to run around past the pool. And I was about to say the Pope got power to cut them off. Oh, they yo, he, he, yo, he was gangster, oh, real. Mm, but gangster. you notice yeah. another point that I'm going to make about the Pope, and please tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> He was gangster, and the gangsters liked him, but the real gangsters with the money, they ain't like Oh, no, nah, yeah. And you know what's crazy <laughs> is that you hear this talk right. like capitalism is just, like, bigger than everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't Even understand why some people are, are Jesus lovers. Like, you, you sit there, and you go to church, and you claim that you're religious, and you're a conservative, and you watch Fox News, and you love conservative principles, and Jesus this and Jesus that. But when you got a godlike figure, I hate to say that, because I don't believe in that shit, so it ain't blasphemy to me. But when you got a godlike figure coming to the people to preach like Jesus did, to tell you and stop you being so him. fucking greedy. Uh, Excuse uh, my language. Yeah, that, I'm that, sorry. Be the last I forgot one. where I was. Yeah, yeah don't forget again. <laughs> but you, you, okay. you know what I'm saying? You forget that this is what you believe in. Yeah. Right. But money is the root of all evil, But you evil, know what? Bro. These are also the same people that's against abortion but okay with the death penalty. Yeah, so you're right. We, so if we're talking about being a bunch of big freaking hypocrites, and freaking is the word you want. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. uh, if we're talking about being a bunch of big freaking hypocrites, then it is the you know the conservatives. And I and I generally try to avoid, if you listen to this, you're a long time listening to this show, you know I generally try to avoid saying Republican or Democrat. You know, I'm more likely to say blood or cuz because yeah. it's red and blue and they all gangs. You know what I mean? Or the purple people. Those are my yeah, phrases. Because yeah. at the end of the day, you, you have to realize that they are in a position to try to get what they want from you. And so we, we as in black people, oftentimes make the colossal mistake of falling in the Democratic line, even if we see the Republicans while out with a whole lot of really, you know, what we perceive as being racist tactics, mm -hmm. we still fall in line with the Democrats, which makes us a gimme.
for them, which means they ain't trying to help us. They ain't trying to do nothing. The Clintons and being so in love with the Clintons. So that's the reason why I picked on her. Hmm. But you can pick anybody. You know what I'm saying? But you know who I do see out there? I see a whole lot of Bernie Sanders. I see a whole lot of Donald Trump. You know what I mean? There's certain people that's going to go out there and talk to the people. Yeah, but you know why they're going out and speaking to the people? Because they are trying to get people miseducation to believe oh, yeah. that they are actually that trying may be, that to may, that do may be, something. That may be Donald Trump, and I give you that. I well, give Bernie, you that. Uh, yo, come on now, wait. You listen to Bernie Sanders, man. He makes a lot of nah, sense. Bernie, no, nah. Bernie's a man of the people. Bernie he, he, is too social. For me. He's a socialist. He's, 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 he's a socialist. For me. He's a socialist. But nah. so was Jesus. <laughs> well, yeah, Jesus. Yeah, you're right. Jesus Wait a was minute. a socialist. <laughs> uh, right by, yeah. but, mm, Jesus was a socialist. Yeah, and anybody, Jesus wouldn't win shit today. Look, so he was any, a revolutionist anytime, more so than anytime, a... He was fake. Anytime you got somebody Whoa, that can feed... Jesus all, was fake. Hold on a second. Anytime you got somebody that can feed the whole hood with a, with a loaf of bread, <laughs> that's a socialist. That's definitely socialism. I mean, you know, we say it in a silly way, but that's some real talk. That is, that is. I think I would... I wholeheartedly That's agree so with Bernie Sanders, funny. except it's Jesus impossible to change people's minds that way. So since I know that there is 50% of the population, if not 75% of the population, who loves money and wants to be on capitalism side, I can't vote for somebody who's going to be so hard to the left. I, so I he's can, just too far. And I would have, and I'm going to, I'm going to plead. You know, I'm going to lay on the on the court my evidence to say that I wish that I didn't think this way, but there is no way in hell. Somebody like that could run the country because he would never imagine. You see what Barack's going through. He would never get anything done. No way in hell. Bernie might get shot. Well, Bernie think, would I, get I think, shot. I think the problem, Bernie would get I, shot. I, I think, You're not liking like my money. Yeah. But I think the biggest <laughs> problem that I'm seeing coming from the left is the fact that they old all of them. Bernie Sanders in the 70s. Joe Biden's yeah. in his seventies. Hillary Clinton will be seventy by election day. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, well, his, his, you know, there's no youth over there. So when they die off, brother, what's going to happen? Unfortunately, I don't think there's anyone in the, in the quote unquote youth bracket that cares enough about government per se. Like our young leaders are doing community grassroots type yeah. um, activism. You got your Jamal Bryant's up in Baltimore. You know, you know I mean, I wanted to start naming people, but you know, in Detroit, you got your, what's that cat? Um, Bullock. You got these, you know, they're doing grassroots city wide and, and more neighborhood type things. I don't see many young um, politicians or whatever you want to call them that are interested in a national stage or a national level of, of politics. As far as your Hillary Clintons not coming to, you know, the hood or, or your, your urban radio stations, well, frankly, to them, that's not a market that's val valuable because not many of them are voting. Like, when you look at the percentages of it, yeah, they come to them at the end because it's like, oh, okay, now that I've done all, hit all the major markets, let's go get some of these N-words that's going to vote. Right. Yeah, another reason why it's not valuable is because they feel like they already got it in their pocket, though. That's part of it. I can agree with that. That, 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 that has but to be part you, of it. Can you argue with Hillary? When we look at the candidates that the black people are, are presented with at face value, which is the, the deepest le level that most, most people deal with politics, right. whatever they're shown on Worldstar or right. the, the news feed, she does have us all in pocket. But you know what else? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. I know a few elders who are still mad to this day that she, she lost to, to Barack Obama. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it took, you know, the, the, the right side and a lot of the racist things that went on against Barack Obama to have, you know, some of these folks support him. Because mm -hmm. at that point, it was like, how are you not going to support the president that they throwing all of this dirt on? Mm -hmm. You know, but... I, I, where I get frustrated, we're going to come back to the Pope in a second, but I just want to finish this point, give everybody an opportunity to finish their thought on this before we move on, but where I get upset is black people, and, and, and Pete, I want you on this one, cleanly, please. Yes, sir. Uh, black people, and this is just my opinion, are the only lot of people that seem to vote, you know, rank and file than anybody else you don't get white people that do it because obviously a lot of them vote for the red and a lot of them vote for the blue obviously you're not seeing that with latinos because the, the bush has got a lot of latino vote you know what i mean and so did uh romney and so did uh uh mccain That's true. 
true. And so if you look, you know, people say that black people put the president in office, which is the biggest smokescreen I've ever seen. Because if you go back over the last bunch of elections, 90%. black people always vote yeah. Democrat. Right. We just happen to get a viable candidate right. to vote for. Right. Ain't nobody right. looking to vote for Ben Carson. Didn't nobody right. looking to vote for Herman Cain. Oh, Wasn't nobody yeah, looking gosh. to vote for Jesse Jackson or Al Sharpton. You know what I mean? So it wasn't like black people only came out because Barack Obama was black. They came out because the brother was talking and made sense. Right. You can say what you want and about your different. feelings about him now. That's not where I want to go. I want to talk to you. I want your opinion about how we streamline our vote. What's your thoughts about that? Because I know you have some interesting opinions. Well, yeah. So, no, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I vote Democratic because this is my opinion. <laughs> Because we just heard somebody in this room say that they were Republicans, so this is no shot at anybody. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, that and I heard that too. I heard that. And 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 I am uh, well. Let me let me not preface it so much. Um, I'm a Democrat because I got a fuck. I have a heart. Forgettable. I have a heart. Oh, okay. And I feel like that I don't want to be taxed. I don't have a dump button for this I don't, guy. <laughs> I really don't. I don't. I don't have. I don't want to be taxed a lot. Um, I don't want people to be aborting kids. Hmm. Um, I actually don't want to be gay, <laughs> right? I agree with a lot of shit that conservatives agree with. I'm about to put you out. Like seriously, I'm about Was to put it? You. stop cussing, man. Did I curse again? Yeah. yeah. God. Yeah. Darn. I was about to Dog. cuss again just All now. Right, finish your point, man. So here's my point. It's really so my point is, is I actually don't see anything wrong with dem- voting Democrat. I think that's the right way to vote. That's just my personal opinion. I think that the youth. The youth in America understand that as well. That's why you see a lot of. Uh, I disagree with my man B, who said that um, that that the youth doesn't get involved. If you take, if you pay attention, the youth is overwhelmingly democratic and overwhelmingly compassionate towards causes like women's choice, towards gay rights, towards taxing the rich so that the poor can get something. So and, and look, and I'm being taxed. I'm being taxed to death. No, 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 no I'm gonna I'm throw it to my man. I'm a, so let me let me let me get to my point. He's biting his. his yeah, so he's dying over there. So um so yeah. So I just wanted to say that. I wanted to say that wh- how I feel about voting Democratic. Now I say I wanted to say that, but it is not on because I heard this say this this said a lot. It is not on any uh, uh, politician to do anything for me or the next person. It is completely on me to. In- to to adopt a principle or a cause and fight for it. And so I don't look for uh, Hillary to do something for me or my community. I look at Hillary's platform and say, wow, that makes sense. I look at Barack Obama graduating from where, uh, Princeton or wherever he graduated from Yale and going back to Chicago. I, that reminds me of my friend Amanda Richardson. She would hate me if I told her name on there, but she, she's at Michigan right now. She's got all types of degrees and she wants to go back and fight for the community. You dig what I'm saying? So it is, it is those... It, 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 it is that idea of, of improving your community that I agree with wholeheartedly. And that's how and that's why I support Democratic um, um, policies. B, you, you over there about to lose your self over there. So the floor is yours. The problem is the Republican Party is being represented by idiots. True. Um, Eh, and, and, and that I have to apologize to the world for because frankly they don't represent the Republican um, uh, way of thinking as a whole you have some people just like in any school of thought religion politics or whatever you have some people who are extremist they pick certain things to, to build their their premise on and they harp on those specific things and those specific things only when those specific things specific things only make up a very small portion of the problem or the issue at hand so to the to the point of, of democrat versus republican when it comes to me calling myself a republican i call myself a republican because i agree with more of the republican views than the d- democratic but i have voted democratic in the past and as far as the youth getting involved, they are getting involved, but they're getting involved on a social media level. Like, it's this new Facebook age where social media gives us um, audiences and voices that some of us, frankly, don't deserve. Some of us are not informed enough to be talking to the hundreds and thousands of people that we're talking to, saying the things that we're saying. Because, frankly, we ain't never been nowhere. We ain't never done nothing. We're kind of stupid. So having said that, yeah, our youth are getting involved, but they also whipping the nay nay while they're involved. So miss me with our youth. But, you, you know, I, I, I can ag- I agree with a lot of it. I mean, I'm, I'm, hey, Marcus, hey, I am nervous right now because 
the blood moon must have did something because I'm sitting here agreeing with Pete, and you know y'all, how that pains me. Disagree all you the time. You know how that pains me, but the brother is is a very intelligent young man, and he's made a good point. I won't say that be to say that you're not, but I look at things as an older guy in a different light, and it's, this is where I'm had to put a little spin on it. You made the point that you said that the youth don't get involved. They do, per what we were talking about just a few minutes ago, Pete. But what I will say is, you know how much young money is now turning to old money and their ideologies are changing from what they thought then to where they're going now. Let's look at the, the, the yuppies or the, the baby boomers. Mm-hmm. They, pro- they had the same freedom fighter techn- uh, ter- uh, uh, mentality, thank you, that wanted to get out there and fight, fight, fight. But then as they got older and that money started to get longer, what happened? They got comfortable. They got comfortable and they got to change. And I think that that's the where the millennials and the Gen X population and group, which, which one do we fall in? We're X. We're X. They're millennials. Yeah. They're millennials. <laughs> Man, listen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I, I think that unless you were really, really struggling with finances, unless you were really miseducated or undereducated, mm-hmm. You're going to follow that same path that you always follow. The people who have a little bit of money, and I see this every day in the profession that I'm in. When you get a little bit of money, you get a whole lot of dangerous. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's what I'm seeing. So, you know, the battle that we're having is one and the same. What we need to be able to do is how do we educate us enough to make sure that we stay level on the path that we're doing. If you, if you, see a, if you have a good idea and you want to follow that, that principle, follow it out to the end. A lot of people want to jump bandwagons. Right, right. I can dig it. Ain't no half stepping, Marcus J. Live from the Den Legacy Internet Radio. 804-402-2893 is the number to die to be a part of the show. We appreciate the uh, the rhetoric that's going back and forth. Very, very smart conversation. I appreciate our brother Prickly Pete and our brother B, uh, who were just meeting. So I'm glad to see this brother. Hopefully we can make uh, greater acquaintances and, and, and even partners as we continue in this on air relationship as i continue we started this talking about the pope b i want you in on this one first Uh-oh. uh yeah brother I'll put you on the spot uh this one i'm getting from dailymail.com just kind of let you and our longtime listeners know uh-huh. what it is that we do with this part of the show okay you know a lot of times there are things that happen in the world that make you cock your head to the side maybe to the left or maybe to the right you squint your squint eyes a little, a little bit, bit yeah. and you say what the hell <laughs> that's what the segment that we're in W-T-H. right now wth i got you wth <laughs> <laughs> AP, what thing, do we call AP, it? WTH. Man. My brother. He on mic restriction. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, look, I had to take Mike from him. I had to take, take, I, I had take Mike from him. Time out. I had to put him in Mike time out, but I love his brother. But anyway, what the hell? Okay. This one is about okay. Congressman Bob Brady. Bob, who's that? Bob Brady. Okay. Congressman Brady. Bob Brady. Okay. He's a devout Catholic okay. and Democrat from Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah, he took Uh-oh. the Pope's glass of water. No, I don't. And after the Pope addressed Congress, Representative Brady made his way to the podium to get the leftover liquid so that he could no. drink it. He shared the water with his wife, Deborah, and her and his staff, and plans to use the rest to sprinkle on his grandchildren. Wait. He poured the liquor into the mouths of others rather than letting them hold the glass and had his staff send out photos. He did the same thing at President Obama's inauguration with his water glass. Brady also plans to have police dust the cup for fingerprints to prove it was used by Pope Francis. Misappropriation of funds. Word. Well, <laughs> Word. Um, yeah, and now we're looking wow. at the photos. Uh, Pete's looking at it right now. Wow. Uh, I'm showing wow. B. Our special oh, guest really who just happened. came in, who I'm going to introduce here in a minute, as well as Big Bro Joe, is is Whoa. is so y'all can see that I ain't playing. She's wearing Eagles. Jersey. Yeah, yeah, she's rocking the Eagles jersey, That's so hot. that ought to, that says a lot about her too. That's hot. Uh, you know, because she's <laughs> never won a title, so she doesn't know any better. So, so what do you say, man? Ah, uh, wow. Um, hey, um, sometimes you gotta steal some poke water. I-
don't know. I, I mean, sometimes, sometimes. Man, I am at a loss. So, wait. Uh, did the the po- um. So the po- water, but we got we got something to drink. Yeah, you know. So anytime yeah. you got to talk, there's gonna be something to drink. So he stole the water and gave it to his wife and kids and such. Poured it into their mouths. Yeah, because it's potent. Hmm. And he did the same thing to the president. I need a psyche valve. Stat. I'm sorry. That's 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 my thoughts. I need a psyche valve. Yeah, on, on him because he he ain't right. Yeah, no, I can dig it. Ain't no half step on Marcus J. P. So I'm one of those people that truly believes that the politicians are leaders of our country should be career politicians and should know what the hell they're doing. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was his right, name maybe again? that's stupid. I don't believe uh, Brady, Congress, Bob Brady Congressman Bob Brady from Pennsylvania. I'm just not. A, I just don't believe in this idea that uh, you shouldn't be a career politician. Oh, and so this is an example. And I'm trying to figure out how long he's been in, in office. I'm working on that. Yeah, 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 Joe is efforting that. Right. We know so he's a Democrat. Well, and so. then you know, here's the, that's the greatest part about it, because now I know this touches both uh, strands. Oh, the crazy the goes around both sides. It goes around. <laughs> so, purple, purple people. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering why it is uh, for this person it's so important to capture the memories of people that he meets. And then immediately, I think, it's just, he's no different than American citizens. We cry for Michael Jackson. We cry for Beyonce. We clamor at the president. We're trying to get his autograph. And he's just so desperately trying to be remembered that he doesn't even realize how stupid he's at. <laughs> just like the Michael Jackson fans. You, you want to say you was there and you met Michael Jackson. You want to say that you saw him live, but you definitely don't want to say that you fainted. <laughs> But yeah, and this guy is a career. I, I don't. I don't understand it. He's. A, I thought he was a tea, uh, either a Tea Party or or Occupy Wall Street guy. But he's a career politician that finds it enjoyable to capture the memories of people that are celebrities. Homie's That's essentially water. what it is. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, let me see. Rep uh, Brady, Democrat from Pennsylvania, first district, nineteen ninety eight to twenty sixteen. No, that's um, career. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. I want to take an opportunity to introduce uh, our, spe- our special featured guest of the night. She just slipped in, and so I want to make sure that we get her properly introduced. Uh, you guys hear her. Longtime listeners know who she is. You hear her on the fourth Monday of every single month. She leads us in our relationship segment that we call the Diva Diaries. I got my sister, the dating pool diva. Free Spirit Enterprises is author charisma is up in this joint. Yo, what's up, sis? Hey, what's going on? I'm chilling now. You listening? You hear this mess about the Pope, and you hear this mess about the congressman, someone that people actually voted for to get them to go to to Washington, stealing water. What you think? Uh, my sentiments are the same as everybody else. I mean, that's kind of strange. <laughs> that's nasty. That's just nasty. I, I just I, I don't have much more to say than that. That's just. It's more I mean, than it's more it's more than strange. It's nasty. He is a human being, just like all of us. He's not anything, you know, beyond that. He may represent God, but he's not God. No, I can dig that. That I mean, it, that that might be that might be actually the point of the night when you say that he represents God, but he's not God. And for those of us agnostics and for those atheist brothers and sisters out there, I know that it offends folks for me to refer to them as atheist brothers and sisters out there. But it also offends me when Christians get so mad at Muslims because of ISIS, when nobody says a damn thing about the KKK lynching folk. So let's let's Church. let's let's go ahead and keep it 100 when it comes to that, because I know some atheist people who are the smartest, most intelligent people. And they also have a whole lot of love and compassion yeah, in yeah. their in their heart. I know some personally and also know some mean ass christians right so let's keep that 100 yeah. you know what i mean i also know you know of the islamic faith that some people that blow up people you know what i mean so there's crazies and good in everything that's real you know what i mean so let's say that pete is, is there anybody that you in and take out the sexual connotation or sexual um because uh, you know i might i'm gonna ask this and you might say oh beyonce <laughs> so no. take out the sexual uh uh, uh sort of direction that this might this question might derive from mm-hmm. is there anybody's water that you would drink yes and then okay so then there's the question why judge him if there's somebody for you that because you would drink this water for? man was also have known to turn that same water into wine 
And this man was also oh, said Jesus. to have Well, he's been. dead. So let's talk about living people. But I he mean, did live at one point. He, he actually was there a man. See, yeah. the thing, but see, the thing is, I had this debate with a sister of mine recently. We were talking about the difference between knowing and believing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm one of those people. I mean, it, it's semantics to some. Mm-hmm. I, I acknowledge that it's semantics to some. But for the purposes of the discussion, I was speaking with a devout Christian. Mm-hmm. And so I had to make it plain to this person that you believe Mm -hmm. even what you think you know. Mm -hmm. You don't know. You think you know. Mm -hmm. You don't know. You can tell me that you got all the signs you want. But at the end of the day, you don't know. You believe and that belief is called faith. True. That's the essence of thinking that you know if we're speaking religiously or spiritually. It's faith. And it's okay. True. But when you say that you know... When you're debating with someone like me who's coming from a non-religious aspect, mm-hmm. a more logical aspect, rational. a more agni- uh, agnostic, atheistic, mm-hmm. rational aspect, you sound silly when you say that. Indeed. And so, I and mean, frankly, I don't want to be, I don't want to be, oh, I'm sorry, I mean, cut you up, brother, but I don't, I don't want to sound disrespectful, but no. at the same time, these folks don't worry about sounding disrespectful to me. Because of my lack yeah. of religion. Yeah. And so when I have to deal with their aggressive lack of religion, every once in a while, they're going to hear me say that they sound silly. Now, first of all, on behalf of every true believer, I apologize for them idiots. Because first of all, to say that you know just kind of wipes away the faith that you're beating the guy over the head with anyway. Because if you know, you have no need for faith. So the two really shouldn't and can't coexist. That's that's number one. That might be the deepest thing that anybody <laughs> said. The, that might be the deepest thing that anybody said the whole night. That's a mic drop. That's just you yeah. know what I'm saying. Poof. Yeah, man. Randy Watson. Yeah. But no, I'm just <laughs> no real talk, man. Like I'm 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 a different believer. I'm I'm a different type of believer. So I I, I respect everybody's point of view. Right. And I recognize that because I do believe in God, I have to leave God's work to Him. Right. It's not my job to make you believe anything. It's just my job to act according to what I believe. Right. And if God being God has in the plan, quote, finger quotes, for you to believe eventually, you will. It's right. not for me to do or change. Yeah, no, so anybody who thinks otherwise, they kind of outside of themselves and, re-need, and, re-need, and need to re-need to check their shell. But I also, you know, I also know that there's one God. That's just it. like, you know, you know, there's just there's just one, just you know what I mean? And is you, you, you have different perspectives. You That's relate it. to the creator in different ways. Some people call it the creator. Some people call it God. Some people call it, you know, Allah or Buddha or whatever it is. But mm-hmm. there really is one. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of times we get so caught up in thinking that our way is the only way That's that it leads to an innate disrespect of other people. Mm-hmm. And so I can't consciously say that what you said is wrong because you identify as your identify yourself as a republican mm-hmm. i can't say that you're wrong for that because you have good reason for your experience in life to say what you said right. and i ain't never walked in your shoes right. i just met you today and i know that you're a smart brother because of the things that you've said you know what I'm saying? And so if you showed yourself to be different, then I would have a different opinion. And that's how I feel oftentimes about people who want to beat me in the head with a Bible, especially when I just meet them. Right. You know what I mean? Like right. you haven't earned a right to pull me to the side and tell me that I'm just so wrong because I don't believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Right. You know what I mean? You haven't earned that right. And so it's silly to me when I hear you talking that because ain't nobody around that can tell you that they was there and they seen it. You know what I mean? Like you sitting around believing that people in the Although Bible lived 700 years, like us. Methuselah lived 700 right. years. Like we you believe that? Back. And my grandma died at 82? Like, come right. on, man. You <laughs> 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 know mean? For real? Right, 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 right. You know what we I mean? So, right. you know, there was a slave who lived to be 130 years old who, you know, was born in 1841 and died in, in 1971. Right. You mm. know what I mean? And right. that is the longest known black person that I ever heard of. It's somebody that you can look up. Yeah. But the truth is, at the end of the day, that's 100 130 years it ain't 700 right you know what i mean right. so that that's how i feel about that ain't right. no half stepping with marcus j live from the den legacy internet radio shout out to our sister priscilla she's listening to us in my hometown of jersey city she was on the show with us last week talking about jersey city fashion week so hopefully everything went well with regards to the festivities there in my hometown you're listening to the 2013 honoree of the person of influence award so i'm definitely excited to plug yours truly